This is the famous Arizona Crater, and it's famous for the fact that it's almost the only meteorite crater that's retained its original shape. It's approximately the same as it was immediately after the arrival of a 50-meter meteorite 50,000 years ago. And because of its unique preservation, it seems as if it's alone. But in fact, Vredefort, Sudbury, Chicxulub, Papagay, Manicougan, Ackerman, Chesapeake, there are dozens of them. Erosion and natural processes quickly retouch these scars on the body of our planet. Otherwise, the landscape would be the same as the moon. Some may have a misconception. Well, it all happened a long time ago. Perhaps all the dangerous meteorites, asteroids, and comets have already just hit. Or maybe they're just still on the way. And here we have one candidate, which in 2004 made scientists a little nervous. And not only a little, meet Apophis. This is a rock the size of three football fields, about 325 meters in diameter. It's repeatedly looked in our direction, flying nearby, and we know for sure that it intends to visit us. When Apophis was first discovered, it was almost immediately assigned a hazard index of four on the Torino scale. This is a rather high index, which makes you, if not worry, then at least not ignore the problem. However, in 2006, Apophis was demoted to level one, and in 2006, the probability of collision was qualified as zero. But this is only on the Torino scale. In fact, there are too many variables for any certainty. And to become at least uneasy, it's enough to look at the calculations of the trajectory and not all sorts of probabilities. And here's what we'll see. On January 9th, 2013, Apophis flew by at a distance of 14.5 million kilometers. It would seem that the distance is pretty far. After all, the closest distance from Earth to Venus is only 38 million kilometers. So you could say the asteroid flew almost at a planetary distance. Everything's fine, but it'll return, and quickly, in 2029. Even the exact date when Apophis will fly past the Earth is known. April, Friday the 13th. And now the most skittish of those who are not in the know should probably sit down. Apophis will fly at a distance of about 38,000 kilometers. That's approximately the height of geostationary satellites. And this is not a hypothesis. These are accurate calculations. You may ask, so then will it be visible to the naked eye? And the answer won't disappoint you. It will be visible to the naked eye. True, it'll look like a small speck in the night sky. But knowing the fact that this rock will fly so close to the Earth, it becomes a little scary. Currently, NASA experts assure that the probability of collision is almost zero. However, it's a little scary because of that almost. And if it does come, all life on the planet will die. No, and civilization will not be thrown into some dark Middle Ages. Although, of course, this uninvited guest will cause a lot of trouble and will suffer even more fear. Scientists estimate the force of impact differently because it's not known exactly what composition Apophis has. It can either be a solid stone block or a rather amorphous bag of smaller pieces. At first, NASA specialists estimated the impact force at 1,480 megatons. Then, after clarifying the size of the asteroid and more careful calculations, the sentence was softened, 506 megatons. However, this still isn't much fun. This is a whole order of magnitude, 10 times more than the power of the infamous Soviet Tsar Bomba, which was detonated on Zavaya Zemla. Back then, in some places, it broke the windows of settlements 780 kilometers from the epicenter. However, it should be understood that there's no direct dependence on the impact power. And 506 megatons doesn't mean that everything should be multiplied by 10 compared to the Tsar Bomba. But yes, it would be most unlucky if the strike falls on densely populated regions, or even more, on a metropolis. Let's say on Moscow. Why not? Here, Russian scientists describe stunning pictures. An impact like this will form a crater the size of the Garden Ring, about five kilometers, and all life inside Moscow Ring Road will be destroyed by the shockwave. The entire Moscow region will be covered by fires and severe destruction. Small and medium-sized destruction will engulf the entire central district of Russia. Unfortunately, Ukraine will also suffer quite a bit. And in some places, windows will be broken even as far as Western Europe. Communication will disappear almost throughout the entirety of Europe due to strong ionization of the air. Abnormal weather phenomenon will be observed throughout the planet for several years after the event. 
These will be typical phenomena that accompany the strongest volcanic eruptions. There may be cold snaps in some regions, droughts in others, and sharp temperature changes elsewhere. And almost certainly we'll see the most beautiful sunsets that we could ever imagine. This already happened in 1991 after a large-scale eruption of the Pinatubo volcano. And even earlier, in April 1815 when the catastrophic eruption of the Tambora volcano led to the so-called Year Without Summer in Europe which was also accompanied by indescribable beauty of sunsets, which were depicted by many artists of that time. We'll all suffer immensely from such an event, but in general the picture will be far from apocalyptic. And although humanity will not be the same from that moment on, ah, oh God, how annoying this phrase has been since 2020. 2029, stop, stop. <sighs> okay, sorrow, emotions, come on, how many times? Okay, moving on. So, although humanity will once again not be the same as before, the dust will settle, the world will quickly come to its senses, and popular excursion routes will operate to the crater in place of Moscow. But still, there won't be anything pleasant in this story, and everyone will be sad. So it's obviously desirable that this doesn't happen. But the question arises, does something depend on us in this sense? Can we somehow prevent it, or can we only dig bunkers and hide underground? Interestingly enough, we can actually do something, and serious experiments have already been done. And not just in the laboratory, but right in space with a real asteroid. And even successfully. But first things first. The discussion about planetary protection from such unwanted invaders as Apophis or even worse has been going on for a long time. And thanks to Hollywood, we have firmly learned that there is no way out without Bruce Willis. The reality, as always, is much more prosaic. We're still far from being able to bring a whole drilling rig to an asteroid with a nuclear bomb. In addition, we're not yet able to destroy the asteroid. And this is a risky undertaking from the point of view of the do not harm principle. But changing the trajectory of the celestial robber so it stays away from our peaceful planet is more realistic. Although at first glance, it also looks too optimistic. In fact, the question here is how much time we have between the detection of the threat and the moment of its predicted collision. If it's a matter of months, then chances are zero to change its course. If it's years and decades, as in the case of Apophis, then there are some chances. Scientists, enthusiasts, and dreamers have invented some things which could work. Nuclear charges, gravitational tugs, an ion beam, a focused solar beam, solar cilia, electromagnetic catapults, a kinetic ram, and many other options of varying degrees of exoticism. And the recognized planetary scientist Eugene Shoemaker, yes, the famous comet Shoemaker Levy is his, in 1996 proposed to release clouds of water vapor on the asteroid's trajectory, thereby gradually slowing it down. And all this just to slightly change the trajectory of the celestial body. This microscopic change in decades will slowly lead to the fact that the asteroid would be far from Earth. But no matter how doubtful all these proposed methods look, NASA tested one of them on a real asteroid. We're talking about a kinetic ram and the asteroid Dimorph. On the night of November 24, 2021, a Falcon 9 rocket with a DART spacecraft was launched from the Vandenberg Cosmodrome. Its name stands for Double Asteroid Redirection Test, and the word DART translates as DART or throw. So the mission objectives are pretty obvious. On September 26, 2022, the spacecraft reached the asteroid Dimorph and at 2314 GMT, an epic collision took place. Dimorph is smaller than Apophis, but not by much. 160 meters is not that large, only one and a half football fields. But if this flying rock decides to crash on our planet, it won't seem small at all. So after the collision of the DART spacecraft with Dimorph, Scientists had to wait for some time with bated breath until they could evaluate the results. However, it quickly turned out that the experiment was considered a success. It's worth adding here that Dimorph travels in space not alone, but with his older brother, the asteroid Didym. The latter is almost 800 meters across, and Dimorph revolves around it. So the impact of the DART spacecraft slowed down the rotation time of Dimorph around the more massive colleague by as much as 32 minutes. This was the first ever practical test of a very real planetary defense system, and the good news is that it was successful. In the future, when detecting asteroids and comets that pose a real threat to the Earth, 
the results of the DART experiment will play a decisive role in the survival of mankind. In 2024, Europe plans to make its contribution to planetary protection. The European Space Agency intends to send the HERA spacecraft to the Dimorph Didymus asteroid system. It will measure the size and examine the morphology of the crater formed by the collision with DART, which will allow us to more accurately calculate the effectiveness of the kinetic ram. All this adds a little optimism that at least we can somehow fight off the global threats of this magnitude. But what do we do about Yellowstone? Well, that's another story.